But if you compare that with startups, in startup you do not have this well-defined boundaries. If you see in the big tech space, because of the fact that the boundaries are well-defined, then you are going to be responsible for one specific thing. If some of the things goes wrong, then it can impact millions altogether because these products are actually used by quite a few million people. You Most of the time when you are going to work with any startup, the version control system that you are going to see is going to be Git. In big tech companies, you get a lot of things that you have to learn as well because those exposure you are not going to get outside. So technically speaking, I have worked with Google's engineering first culture, Microsoft's structured processes, and now I'm experiencing Meta's move fast energy. And with my experience when working with these three Fangam companies, I wanted to actually share my two cents around what do I feel if you're somebody who is a budding software engineer or who are in their early uh, stage of their career, what they can actually expect working in these big tech giants. So I'm Sanket Singh and um, recently I moved to uh, Meta as a software engineer, right? And I was actually thinking that like in the last five years, what are some of the interesting things that I have noticed in the big tech companies? And I was able to come up with a few pointers and I thought, why not just make a quick video about that? So without any further ado, let's just start. But before starting the video, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, do consider subscribing because we are going to put some really awesome content that is going to be extremely helpful for you for your upcoming software engineering career. So let's just start. So before moving forward in the video, I would like to talk about the new system design 2.0 cohort that we have recently launched. If you are somebody who is actually willing to apply for a lot of product based companies and you are technically confused on where to actually prepare for low level design, high level design and machine coding rounds, then you are actually at the right place. In the new system design cohort, we are going to actually include all the relevant concepts around high level design, low level design, machine coding. And this time we have kept it kind of like bigger and better. This time we have specifically added a lot of company specific interview problems solving both in HLD and LLD. We have added interesting concepts around distributed system like Lampot clock, vector clock, consensus algorithms and whatnot. The complete curriculum of this system design 2.0 cohort is mentioned in the link in the description section below. You can use this coupon code coming on your screen to get massive discounts altogether. There is a dedicated video on the channel where you can find all the details regarding the course syllabus. But what I can assure you is based on my experience working as a software engineer and all of the interviews that I have given, this is going to be a very comprehensive course where we are going to talk about all the relevant things that is going to be necessary, not just for you to crack software engineer interviews, but also work as a software engineer. So do check out all the links in the description section below. Uh, all the course syllabus, all the dates, everything necessary is already mentioned there. So now let's come back to the video. So see, I, when I was in college, I used to work with a lot of startups, right? I used to do internships with a couple of startups, then also got my hands dirty in the open source ecosystem uh, during my tenure at GSOC. And now I work with companies like Meta, Microsoft and Google. What I definitely realize is that in the big tech uh, company space or in the big tech space, the boundaries are pretty well defined, right? There is going to be definitely properly defined cross-functional teams. There is going to be properly defined roles. At every level, your expectations are going to be defined that as a software engineer, at least what are you expected to do, right? Your projects are going to be defined and there will be clear ownership of a lot of things in most of the cases. But if you compare that with startups, in startup, you do not have this well-defined boundaries, right? In startup, there might be a case that you yourself are doing a lot of work for a lot of cross-functional uh, teams, right? There might be a case, for example, I'll just give you a small and a simple example that let's say, for example, in Google, if we had to get some data about any feature rollout, right? Of course, we can also do that, but there was a dedicated data analytics team that used to help us a lot and used to assist us in getting some really important data about every feature release, right? But when we used to, when I used to work with something like, let's say, interview bit, right? There, whatever data collection we have to do, whatever I would say data analysis we have to do, most of the time we have to do it ourselves, right? So it's not like a clear boundary that you are only going to be the owner owner of one specific thing. And that's an interesting thing about startups as well, right? If you are in your early early uh, career and you are in college, you are you want to learn a lot of things. Then in startups, you actually see lot of different different spaces altogether and it's like there is a good chance that your founder might be just sitting ne in your next room and you will be involved in a lot of core discussions because the team is small and the small team only is responsible for driving everything 
Whereas if you see in the big tech space, because of the fact that the boundaries are well defined, then you are going to be responsible for one specific thing. But it's going to be your responsibility that it's of the highest possible quality. Your engineering craft is as good as possible, right? If some of the things goes wrong, then it can impact millions altogether because these products are actually used by quite a few million people, right? So overall, you can see the impact is going to be present at both the places. It's just that the type of impact that you are going to get on yourself plus on the product that you are actually building can be a bit different, right? In startups, you are going to learn a lot of things like you are going to learn breadth of a lot of things. But in big tech companies, you are going to get a lot of interesting tools which are going to be probably proprietary for the company itself. But the specific problem they solve and how they solve that on scale, that is going to be very, very interesting, right? So this is kind of like the first comparison that I was able to directly draw. Now, one interesting thing that I feel in startups is that because startups have to like move very fast, they often tend to rely a lot on open source technologies, which is technically a great thing to do. Whereas because companies like Google, Microsoft, they have a lot of, I would say, resources as well. And they have a lot of privacy restrictions. They have a lot of security restrictions. That is why a lot of tools, softwares, editors, languages, frameworks, etc., are built in house, right? For example, you most of the time when you are going to work with any startup, the version control system that you are going to see is going to be Git. That's one of the most famous open source version control systems. But in Google, you're not going to see Git. Google internally uses something called as Piper. There is a dedicated paper that Google has actually released that you can read about why they actually use Piper, right? So these are small differences, but actually they are going to teach you a lot of things, right? When you're going to join a big tech company, there is going to be some, uh, I would say, learning curve for just the specific tech stack. Once you are well versed with the tech stack, then you are going to start learning the business aspect of the product that you are going to work with. But that's not the case with startups. There is a good chance that in the startups, the first six hours that you are going to probably spend in your office, you are going to set up the project, you are going to have your lunch, just post lunch, you are going to be probably assigned a task. You have to start working on that immediately, right? So this is kind of like a difference. For example, in Google, we used to have like three to four weeks of boot camp, right? There is no such boot camp in startups, right? In startups, day, day zero is the day you raise your first pull request. This is kind of like an important thing that you have to keep in mind that in big tech companies, you get a lot of things that you have to learn as well, because those exposure you are not going to get outside. But in startups, your work starts immediately, your impact starts immediately. This is kind of like something that you should keep in mind. Now, I believe that if you like remove the outliers, right? Of course, outliers can be in both of the spaces. Like there can be some few very specific startups that are going to pay extremely, extremely high. There can be few uh, big tech companies that are going to pay extremely, extremely high. So if you avoid the outliers, then and you just consider the majority of the, I would say, com uh, the companies, then I believe that the overall benefits and the perks that you get in the big tech companies are going to be slightly on the higher side. For example, there are a few startups in India that do not actually offer any kind of annual performance bonus, right? They just offer you annual, uh, I would say salary increment, but there is no performance bonus. But majority of the big tech companies, not just Fang, like companies like Walmart, companies like Intuit, Adobe, etc. all of these big tech companies, majority of them do offer uh, performance-based bonuses as well, right? This keeps you involved in the game and keeps you motivated as well, right? A lot of, um, I would say, you can see the startups ha do uh, offer ESOPs, right? Now, if the startup gets listed, of course, that is going to make you a good amount of money as well, right? But I have seen a few startups that don't even offer buybacks for their ESOPs. But that's not going to be the majority of the case with the big tech companies because most of them are listed and there is going to be specific trading windows where you can actually sell or buy their stocks. And interestingly, I have seen that in a few companies like, let's say, Microsoft, Adobe, Coinbase, Uber. They also offer you something called as an ESPP program that you can can actually buy the company stock at a certain discount. So you can see these are small, small benefits that you get a bit extra on the, um, I would say, uh, big tech companies. But I believe the overall career growth and the learnings that you get is going to be way higher. For example, if I have to do an internship for, let's say, three months and I have, a, I have an offer from, let's say, a big tech company or a startup, with respect to the learning opportunities, definitely startup is going to be a place where I'm going to learn a lot in a three month span. Of course, for a prolonged period of time, let's say if you see a two to two and a half year span, there might be a case that the amount of learning you get on both the places might be overall majorly more or less same. But for a very short span of time, if you see the amount of learning that you get in startup is going to be way higher. 
so there is some benefit here some benefit on the other side as well now you will find a lot of people actually saying that the pace of work in big tech companies like google and microsoft is slow i would say yes it might feel you a bit slow but the structure is very much necessary because even one line of code can crash a lot of things altogether right that's why the culture of writing design docs presenting them to a lot of people getting all the stakeholders in the game getting the approval from everybody this is very very important in big tech right whereas if you see startups in startups most of the time what happens is that you have to get the customer acquisition as fast as possible so you have to release features as fast as possible maybe those features might work might not work but you don't have a lot of time to actually test and see the customer behavior and then take an action there might be a chance that you have to move a lot fast hence you are going to write a lot of code so i would say the churn of code that you are going to write is going to be slightly on the higher side on the startups but the amount of engineering craft and the engineering learning that you get in big tech is also not small right it's going to be extremely extremely high and you you might be probably writing a very small line of code but that can immediately impact millions of people so this is something that you have to definitely draw uh, a comparison because it's not like big tech is to um i would say slow yes you can definitely try to move as fast as possible there as well try to make sure that your turn around time for even writing small docs and all is way less so that you are able to deliver more code as much as possible this is something that you have to keep in mind now interestingly i feel i believe that if you see the the both of the ecosystems have good amount of downsides as well like you will see a lot of news that google has laid off x number of employees microsoft has laid off x number of employees etc interestingly it's not like only the big tech companies are doing the layoffs even mid sized startups big startups small startups the layoff culture is gonna is kind of like happening everywhere it's just that the news is kind of like made from most of the big tech giants right they are the most uh, like uh, they make the most eye catching news right it i believe you understand the news business altogether so it's like the job security is not going to be extremely high on both of the ends to be very honest it's just that i would say one of the downside that is good comparable is the burnout i believe i have seen a lot of people in startups working sometimes even on the weekends right some startups do specifically mention you up front that there might be a chance that you might be doing a debug on a sunday evening right but most of the time like i would say generally most of the time you will find a good uh, i would say work life balance in the big tech companies yes they might feel you a bit slow but this uh, i would say proper cut off uh between the work and the life part is something that the big tech companies do offer you right if you see some us based startups then of course those us based startups are going to offer you a lot and they are going to be remote startups when you see the comparison of the comp structure with respect to companies in india but that's not a direct comparison directly to make right you should uh, try to un understand that there is a currency um, uh, change as well that is technically happening and because of the startup ecosystems there can be a lot of churn of code that you have to technically produce the team size can be very small in startups and in startups people don't have enough time that they also make you learn whereas in big tech companies i have seen people actually mentoring others making others engineering uh, i would say abilities also excel right there is dedicated buddy culture that actually happens in most of the big tech companies so you also grow yourself your and your knowledge as a software engineer right and i believe big tech companies also spend a lot of money in uh, providing i would say some educational benefits so that you can upskill yourself regularly right because of the fact that they have such a big ecosystem of one of the most talented engineers everybody is constantly learning from other it the learning might be technical the learning might be non technical or behavioral but definitely there is a constant learning whereas there can be some sense of burnout in startups that you have to technically keep in mind but on the contrary a lot of people definitely feel that uh, in big tech companies the work is a bit slow a lot of people do feel that as i mentioned so again there are downsides on both the sides uh, but it's something that you have to decide what is going to be more important for you so that is it for this particular video guys this was kind of like my understanding of the comparison between what i used to feel when i used to work with startups and what i now feel when working with big tech companies do let me know if you do not um, i would say think that some of the pointers were correct or if you want to add some pointers i would be happy to read them in the comment section below that being said let's wrap this particular video here we're going to meet soon in the next sort of videos till then take care bye bye i'm sanket singh signing off